Okay, let's, so let's continue our study of quadratics today. And now we're going to get back to solving. Okay, so recall when we solve, we set our function equal to zero and we solve for x. Now, up until now, the technique that we've used is factoring. And I'll review factoring. Today, we're going to learn the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is a method that will always 100% work. Okay, factoring is conditional. It, it has to be a factorable equation. Quadratic formula, we can always use it. Now just recall, when we solve, we solve for the x-intercepts, we can solve for the solutions, we can solve for the zeros, or we can solve for the roots. All four of these terms are synonymous with each other. So if a question asks you to find any one of those four things, we set the equation equal to zero, and we solve for x, either using factoring or the quadratic formula. All right, so find the x-intercepts of the given function. All right, x-intercepts, I set my function equal to zero. And now I'm going to attempt to solve for x by factoring. Okay, a is equal to 2, b is equal to 7, negative 7, c is equal to positive 6. I know when a is not equal to 1, factoring gets a little bit more challenging for you. Okay, so the factors of 2 are the ones that go, and I should put the factors of 2x squared are the numbers that go first, and then the factors of positive 6 are the numbers that go second. So let's do some guessing and checking. This one's nice because 2 is a prime number. The only way I can multiply to 2x squared is if I'm multiplying 2x times x. Okay? Now, let me use some factors of positive 6. So I can get to positive 6 by multiplying 6 and 1. But here's where I need to be a good student. Okay? I got to use all my clues. I have to add to a negative number. So the signs are what determines what I'm going to add to in the middle. So if I have to multiply to a positive number and at the same time add to a negative number, then I should know that these signs in here both need to be negative. Because a negative times a negative is a positive, a negative plus a negative is, will be negative for me. All right, so I put them in place. Now I got to check. This gives me negative 6x. This gives me negative 2x. When I add those together, I get negative 8x. Well, I need them to add to negative 7x, so I know that my factors are wrong. So now I got to try another set. Okay, so my factors of 6, I know 6 times 1, and I know 2 times 3. Now, if 2 is a factor, it can't go in the parentheses that has a 2 as well, because then they have a GCF together. So now let me try minus 2, minus 3. Now I'm going to check it. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. When I add those together, I, in fact, get my original um, middle term. But now I'm not finished. I have to actually solve it. So now I'm going to go back to my factored form. Once it's in factored form, I take each individual factor and set it equal to 0. So 2x minus 3 equals 0. x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now I solve for x. So this one, I just simply add 2 to both sides. On this one, I'm going to add 3, and then I have to divide by 2. Now when I had you guys do this on the form, I wanted them written as x-intercepts. So I wanted them written as points. So x is equal to 3 halves. How did I get it? Because y was equal to 0. x is equal to 2. How did I get it? Because I set y is equal to 0. So if I'm graphing, those are the points that cross my x-axis. Those are my x-intercepts. Now let's look at one that doesn't factor. So y is equal to 2x squared minus 8x plus 3. Set my function equal to 0. I could do some guessing and checking. All right, a is 2, b is negative 8, 
c is positive 3. My only factors of a are 2 and 1. My only factors of c are 3 and 1. So 2x and x. And then I know I have to multiply to a positive and add to a negative. So both signs have to be negative. So if I start guessing and checking, here's negative x. Here's negative 6x. They don't add to negative 8x. And even if I were to ch change the 3 and the 1, it's not factorable. So when you can't factor, then we have to be able to use the quadratic formula. All right, so here's the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula, and I just rewrote my function in standard form. So I have my value of a, my lead coefficient, b, and c. So this, oops, sorry, you need to commit to memory. To solve for x, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So there's quite a bit going on, okay? Now let me, let me remind you, when we solve for our x-intercepts, we can, our x-intercepts can fall into one of three categories. We can have no solutions, we can have one solution, or we could have two solutions, okay? And all of that, and I'm not gonna get into what this is called, but that all depends on the value that's underneath the square root. So remember, we can't take the square root of a negative number. So if you were to get, as you're solving, the square root of a negative value underneath your radical, that just means we have no x-intercepts. There's no solution, okay? If you get underneath here to be the square root of zero, then we have one solution because the square root of zero is zero. So it's like that whole entire expression goes away. If you get the square root of a positive number, then we have two solutions. Okay, and the two solutions come from the fact that there's this plus or minus. So let's go back to our previous and check it out. All right, I'm going to erase these. So I set my function equal to zero. We just proved that factoring wouldn't work. So now let's go to the quadratic formula. I already wrote my values of a, b, and c. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. All right, and I just want to fill out sort of the form that never changes. Now I'll plug in the numbers. Opposite of b, b squared a times c all over 2a. Now notice B is negative here, and negatives really have a tendency to give students some trouble. That's why I put everything in a set of parentheses. I set up the form, then I plugged in my numbers. The opposite of negative 8 is positive 8. You're going to want to use your calculator, and that's fine, but we've talked about this all year long. If you don't put that negative in a set of parentheses and square it, you'll get negative 64 as an answer. That's not the correct answer, though. Negative 8, when I'm multiplying negative 8 by itself, it's going to give me an answer of positive 64. 4 times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24. All over 2 times 2 is 4. So now I'm simplifying as much as possible without the 8 in my calculator. 64 minus 24 is 40, all divided by 4. All right, you're done. Okay, if I'm just asking you to find the x-intercepts, I'm totally fine with you leaving it. These would be my exact values. That's it. That's all I want you to work on for today, okay? I'll do another video where we use this to graph and we'll talk about um, approximating these solutions. But that's all I want you to do for today, okay? Be able to plug everything in, be able to simplify it, and be able to have it in the correct form.
Okay, let's look at another one. So here I have a is equal to one, nothing is written. B is equal to negative two, C is equal to positive two. Okay, when A is equal to one, let's think about factoring. So the only way I can multiply to x squared is x times x. But my only factors of C are two and one. So there's no way that I can multiply to positive two and at the same time add to negative two. Okay, so factoring won't work as well. So now let's go to our quadratic formula. Opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times A times C all divided by two A. Okay, so opposite of B, B squared, four a c all over 2a all right so i filled out the form of the quadratic okay then i plugged in all the numbers so opposite of negative 2 is positive 2 negative 2 squared is positive 4 4 times 1 is 4 times 2 is 8 all divided by 2 4 minus 8 gives me a negative 4 divided by 2. This should be a red flag for you. I can't take the square root of a negative number. So what's my answer to this? It's no solution. And that's it. There's no x-intercepts. If there's no solution, then because we talked about those terms being synonymous, there's no x-intercepts. So graphically, I would think about that would fall into this category where my parabola would never cross over the x-axis, and that's okay. Okay, so your classwork today, for credit for today's class, I want you to complete and submit a picture of your solutions to these two. Find the x-intercepts of y is equal to 2x squared minus 7x plus 1. Find the x-intercepts of y is equal to negative x squared plus 5x minus 2. They both need the quadratic formula. Okay, I'll save you that time. And I want to see the work. I want to see every part of your work to get to your final solution. Take a picture, submit it on the assignment, and I will provide feedback. Have a great day.